Hey guys, welcome to our podcast. We have no name for it yet, so we <laughs> guys need you to help us out, figure out a name. It's yes. myself, the host, the dictator, also known as Faisal, Fernando, whatever you want to call it. Fernando! And we've got our co-host, the star of the, the whole thing, um, IFBB Pro Classic Physique, John Lofthouse. Um, he got his pro card through winning the Two Bros uh, British Finals, uh, that is an IFBB Pro League um, uh, affiliated uh, federation. Um, and he's looking forward to get his debut soon. We're not sure yet. We're still, you know, fucked up with the whole thing here, yeah, quarantine man. and all this shit. Excuse my language, guys. If you have any children, get them out of here because this is going to get real. Um, <laughs> So, uh, welcome, John Lofthouse. Please, go ahead. Yo, what up, man? It's great to have you again. Uh, we've done a live uh, on Instagram before. Yeah, uh, that's kind of what started. Kind of what started all this, isn't it? Yeah, it, it was great on Instagram because we had a lot of people going live in to actually look at it. Yeah. And from this point, we decided to get on the podcast and start working on... Um, Proper questions, maybe um, a, a bit of banter, as they say in England. Banter, <laughs> banter, yeah. Your accent can't say that probably. A banter, Ban banter, banter, banter. Where is your? Where, I've where been living your in England. Again? Again. I, always, I always forget your background. What is it again? It's oh man. You know what? I was in the shower today. I was actually thinking if he asks me this question, I'm fucked. Well, you do yeah. most of the thinking because. I mean, I consider myself Arab because of my father, but my yeah. parents are obviously, the, the, the grandmothers are from different places, so I'm a bit of a mix. I can get away with racism a little bit. I'm just kidding, guys. I'm honestly kidding. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think you grew up in Iraq. Yes, I, I'm, I'm originally from Iraq. Um, uh, lived in the United States, hence the uh, the accent. Uh, we don't go too much into the background because there's uh, uh, you know a lot of uh, a lot of wars, a lot of uh, sanctions that I lived. Yeah. Uh, but you know, here I am. I live in England. Here I live in Hertfordshire. Yeah. Uh, my parents live in Surrey, so I'm uh, okay. you know I'm British. I'm British. Whereabouts, Whereabouts in America? Where was you? Um, uh, Virginia and L.A. After. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I know you've told me this obviously before because we've been in the gym together a lot and that up at, um, at Body Limit, but I always forget. Yes, um, the thing is, um, it's it's a cool thing, you know, having to travel around as a, as an athlete hmm. um, and um, having to look at other people train in different gyms. Yeah, um, and and having to look to see how different styles work and, and different different approaches to different different exercises. It's it's quite cool, and obviously you now. Being a pro, I'm sure you're going to get a chance to travel and have a look at more people. Yeah, I'm sure I will. Plenty of push pull legs and upper lower. Oh, is that is that what you do at the moment? <laughs> no, man. I'm on a. I'll tell you what. At the minute, I'm doing a a six day split at the minute. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't. I didn't even write it down. I just kind of fell into it. I've never written down splits, man. I've always just fallen into splits. You know what I mean? Like you're just. Just uh, you know, look at my like, look at my physique, decide what I need to work on, and then just and then just prioritize it. You know, I'll quite often myself find myself doing mad things sometimes. Like when me and Sammy have gone up to train at um, we used to train at Crayford's at the start of the week, most weeks for the last prep, and then we come to St Albans later in the week or something like that. There or thereabouts or whatever. I can't remember where it was, but we if we went to another gym to train, whether it was St Albans, Crayford's, or uh, muscle works we would always train chest <laughs> and we would always after chest then want to do a little bit of delts just to get that nice <laughs> fullness then we'd hit then we'd hit arms <laughs> so we'd hit like a full upper body session if we ever went away we used to do it all the time apart from that like one leg session we're done with you yeah um, so my, my i don't really have a split man i just my training's kind of weird well, i just kind of train a question here it, it actually it kind of raises a question for, for me to you yeah. Do you think do you think you're one of them people that walks into the gym and think, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna go with my gut feeling. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Because I've heard Jay Cutler do that before. He says, I don't know what I'm gonna train. I just walk in and, and just go with the flow. 
So I literally grew up the first um the first DVD I ever watched in bodybuilding one wasn't um wasn't Pump and Iron, it was it was Jay Cutler's uh one of his DVDs, I can't remember what one it was. Um maybe a cut above or something like that. Uh-huh. It was one of his DVDs, and that was the only DVD I had. That and a few magazines. It was it was my brother's DVD, and it was like it was one of the um the was it Mitsubishi? I can't say it, Mitsubishi or Kakari or whatever. Yeah, you know one of them DVDs where it's like four hours long, like oh, two right. two discs. There's like eight hours of footage of him just training every set, every rep, no editing involved, just like long ass workout videos. And he would talk about how he would just go to the gym and just feel it out and just you know he'd have an idea of what he was going to do but really would just go to the gym and feel it out so I always just adopted that approach from when I was like 18 you know I've never done the whole you know what they say about you know training at higher frequencies like full body splits for younger people because you know more free like you know all that stuff I've never done that I've never done it right so so I mean a lot of people don't know that your favorite bodybuilder is um Tom Platts, as far as yes. I remember. Yeah, yeah, Tom. All day. And, and All when, day. Yeah, when you trained with, with Tom Platts, yes. was, was there was there like a, a program that he had set up, if you know, if you're if you're aware of it, or like how how, how does that work with him? Did he just go with how you look or you know? Well, so so I've done a training seminar with him. So it was the he basically took everyone through his um his normal leg session, what he would do. I mean, I'm sure he had like variations of, of different leg workouts, but the main leg workout he always used to do was pretty much the same. And I still do it now. It's pretty much the only leg workout I do. Um, and that's back squats, um, back squats, ha- hack squats, leg extensions, and then hammy curls and then calves at the end. So that's basically the session he brought us through. Sometimes I don't do it if I'm with Sammy because the squat is, he's, um, his back doesn't sometimes bow too well with the high rep squats. Mm-hmm. So it's more of a session I might do on my own. But if I'm on my own, then that's the session I'll always go to. And, and he literally just took us through one working set of, of each exercise. So we've done one hard set to failure on, on squats, uh, one set to failure on hat squats, leg extensions. And we didn't actually get time to do the hammy curls. But right. yeah, it was mad, mate. I, I was sore for, for nine days, I remember specifically sore like really fucking sore for nine days like you know you've been so sore in your quads where it hurts to touch and like they're just so swollen and like inflammated yeah Uh, that that session really like took me to new heights so i knew i knew i trained hard and i knew i was gonna hit these sets to failure you know because hitting sets to failure like i just knew i was gonna do it i knew i had the mindset to do it and and i went to failure but then he started chucking in these partials and stuff in at the end like with squats like who who the fuck does partials on squats wow on back squats you know you got we wasn't doing a lot of weight because we was doing perfect form i had like a uh, hundred key yeah yeah so two places side of my back but you know i hit like 47 reps to the point where the last four or five reps weren't even mine i got pulled up out of the squat you know they were like full straps yeah and then made me do partials and you're like bouncing with the bar on top of you and you can barely stand and i nearly fell over and oh mate i literally i felt i gotta tell you this i fell down i racked the bar boom dropped to the ground i turned around i got tom platts the golden eagle looking over me and he just puts his hand out and he goes welcome to the pain zone wow. <laughs> and i'm like i'm like i'm in heaven i'm in heaven that was the best thing ever that's all he said welcome video. to the pain zone i know i didn't i didn't get it on video i think uh prim who's the dude with the really long hair a uh, primitive he owns Primitive Gymnasium. He's with uh, Bailey? Bailey? No, 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 not Bailey. He's a he's a classic physique athlete. Oh, oh, I thought I thought you were talking about a photographer. Sorry. No, he's a classic physique athlete. He's got the the long hair. I feel really bad because I can't feel his name. Primitive Gymnasium. Well, he filmed it anyway. I don't know if he's got it. Well, we we need to get in contact with him. This, this yeah, is, uh, this is a remarkable. Uh, he, done well. he, done really, he he was spotting me. He done it really well as well. He got. I think he beat me by a couple reps. That really pissed me off. Wow. I've, I've done about fifty-seven reps with a hundred kilos since then. So. Wow, wow, wow. Um, the thing is, um, we have a lot of questions here regarding training. You know, training legs, and yeah, I think I think I'll I'll stop talking about this because we need to. Because you're you're gonna start answering the questions as you're going talking yeah, about yeah. it. You got so to we're gonna 
we're we're gonna we're gonna I'm, I I have I have another uh, question for you from myself, and um, we can we can uh, get some of the classic physique guys to kind of benefit from from this now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we don't want to target just classic physique. We want all athletes from oh, all yeah, no. corners of the world to listen to yeah. this, and to make sure that um, we want to make sure that you guys have fun too. So. Um, Definitely. First of all, what are you drinking, by the way? Um, protein. <sighs> Guys, he doesn't want to tell us the secret. No, it's, vintage, uh, it's brawn, vintage brawn. Okay, so I'll, is, is uh, that I'll, your sponsor? I'll, I'll is that huh? your sponsor on, on the shaker? Is that what? Is that your sponsorship? Uh, yeah, yeah, old school labs. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell us about the sponsorship here. How, uh, you know, um, you know so, speak to us about it. So Sammy, get sponsored? Um, Sammy kind of uh, introduced me to them. By the way, for people who don't know Sammy, Sammy's my training partner. We'll talk. We'll yeah, he's, he's one of the legends around he's here. Up, yeah, we'll have him on it, but he's done a lot of stuff for me. But you're here, so Sammy's my training partner. So um, I knew about old school abs, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd watch their videos, and I knew that um, Samir and Tom Platts were their their main brand ambassadors. So I was like, oh, that's. You know, it's awesome. So it was a it was a brand that I had always sort of um, like kept an eye on. Not for not for their supplements, but for their for their content. For, they used to put out some. Um, we're not doing loads at the minute, but I know we're looking to do some stuff when when I get out to California. We're going to do some stuff, but um, okay. but yeah, I liked their content. You know, they was putting out videos of Tom Platts training with people and Samir and and all that good stuff. And then after I won the British. You know, I was talking to people and that, and everyone's like, you know, you're sponsored, you're sponsored. Just like friends and that. And I was like, no, I haven't really. I've never really put myself out there to, to try and get sponsored. I've not really been, you know, I'm not about that. I've just, I just bodybuild because I love it, you know. Yeah. And then I was, it got to a point where I was like, you know, maybe I, I do need to start thinking of myself as a brand and start pushing myself and start getting out there a bit. So Sammy, um, Sammy messaged them. I think he saw a picture no, this is the story. They put a post up on their IG story saying, who's your favorite classic bodybuilder? Well, something like that. And uh, Sammy messaged them saying, John Loftus. And they replied saying, who's that? And he sent my pictures over. And he was like, this guy. And then when he done that, Sammy was like, message him, message him. So I sent him a long message saying that, you know, if I was going to be sponsored, I'd, it would, it would, I'd love to be sponsored by you. They'd already sponsored Brion Ainsley, you know, two-time classic champ. I was like, in my eyes... For me, this would be the best sponsor that I could have, you know. Course, yeah. And then, lo and behold, it was literally like after I sent the message. The next day, they was like, "Yeah, we want you, and um, we think you're going to do big things." So I was, I was grateful. Um, yeah, that they just kind of snapped me up, and and that How was it. How long ago was that? It was. It was must have been about December time. Wow, this is amazing. So you you have uh, a sponsorship now. You have a pro yeah, card. I've got two. Uh, I've got two, but I can't. Pr I can't announce the next one until. Probably this week. Probably this week, I can announce it because I'm waiting for them to. Uh, they've sent a, a shipment over of their stuff, and then obviously I've got to I'll wear it and then put a post out. So I can't say who it is, but I've got. Can't second. wait to see that. You yeah, yeah, it'd be cool. Um, shall we go through a bit of questions here from from uh, from the audience? Shoot, man! Right. Shoot, I'm feeling good. I'm in the mood. Uh, I was having a. I was, ha I was having a big dick day this morning. Oh, so. What <laughs> Um, no, I mean, uh, I've, I've had a, uh, as I don't know if the listeners or the viewers would, would know that I caught coronavirus not long ago and this is me recovering. So if you find me with a lazy eye, I promise you guys, that's not a lazy eye. That's just me. I had a, a facial palsy, um, where half of my face went paralyzed. So this is me slowly starting to get better. Do you actually get that from coronavirus? Um, well, it's it's not it's probably not from the coronavirus, but it's 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 an aftermath if that makes sense. Okay. Um, it caught me in my obviously in the in the, um, in the tonsils. I um, mean, yeah. my glands were, were inflamed; they're huge. Yeah. Um, and, and then and then as soon as this started to to as soon as I started getting better from from the temperature and the lungs and everything, mm. uh, I started walking again. Um, coming back, I don't know what happened, and and it, my face just fell to one side and. Man, I, I look awful, man. So uh, now crazy. this is me trying to come back, guys. So this is me after push-ups and doing all sorts. So, yeah, yeah. you know, one of the things that you guys need to realize that during this quarantine time, don't expect us to look in any sort of shape. <laughs> <You know? Huh? laughs> 
So, I expect us to look in shape. Well, I mean, a, a lot of us, a lot of the guys <laughs> out there think like, you know, we have access to gyms, but they don't realize that we're all in the same boat, guys. We don't yeah, have access to gyms. We're doing stuff at home just like everyone else. Yeah, we are in the same boat. You know, in, in eight, more than eight weeks, probably, probably even more, 10 weeks, I've probably trained three times or four times. That's, and it's, this is all home. Yeah. So um, we'll be back, guys. Don't worry. Yeah, 100%. Um, right. So this is well, this is one of the questions here is, uh, that, I, that I really liked. It's not the first one that came, but it was spot on because I loved it. So here it says, do you think too many newcomers that take an interest in bodybuilding compete too early because that it's a cool thing to do? Do you think they should co concentrate more on their physique without the pressure of shows on top? and to get to a certain standard before penciling in a show or just go for it. I was, I was speaking to this um, with my, um, can't call her my girlfriend, we'll call her, we'll call it, it's a weird situation. She is my missus though, Annie. <laughs> she, um, I was talking to, to her about this uh, yesterday because she's thinking about um, competing next year and we was talking about federations and stuff and I got into, into talking about how a lot of, I feel like a lot of people do shows and stuff like um, they'll do like shows in like the PCA Federation or like all the federations, but you know, like the main federation, like two bros, you know, because they feel they're not ready. They feel they're not ready. Or guys will do like classic men's physique. They'll move up to classic. They'll move up to um, open class, you know, in the hope that they one day want to be an open class bodybuilder in the pros. And you know, if that's, if that's the case, yeah, I wouldn't compete. If you wanted to be a bodybuilder at that level, you know, you know, I'm talking like open class or whatever, whatever class, you know, classic physique. I, I personally, knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't compete until I was at least somewhat competitive. Not necessarily like good to go, like you want to walk in and you want to win all the shows straight off because it's not, it's just not going to happen. You know, you'll quickly realize that there's a lot of other good, good athletes out there. But I think you need to be at least somewhat ready and somewhat competitive because I think a lot. Right. I think uh, we've lost the connection here, which is really annoying. Mr. Lofthouse, are you there? Can you can hear me? <laughs> and a lot Hello. Yo. We, we got cut off a little bit. Uh, when did I get cut off? Um, I'm not sure. You're talking about yourself. You would be a little bit competitive and you can go in for it. Yeah. It's recorded not, but let's, let's keep going. Keep yeah, going. it's still recording. Yeah, so... So, um, yeah, I would wait until we was, until I was a little bit more competitive, you know, because you'll quickly find that there's guys out there who have a lot more muscle, a lot more quality, yeah. possibly, you know. So I think it's, you'd probably be wise to, to take the time and, um, you know, and build your physique, develop your physique to a certain level and then, and then make the jump, you know, and then, yeah. yeah. I see, I see what, what I you mean. I mean. One of the things that I, I always, uh, um, you know, mention is that having high standards in, in, in British bodybuilding well, you know it was it was awesome back in the in the 90s yeah um, you know seeing you know I used to look at the heavyweight um, class and I would think every single one of them looks like a pro mm. you know it's because they they took their time they actually trained um, there, there wasn't kind of you know social media for them to to, to you know uh, you know, keep posting pictures of themselves and distraction of the phone. And it was, it was a different era. Let's, let's be, let's be yeah. realistic here. Yeah, but then, but in the same time, we need to realize that in, in every federation, there is, uh, there are first timers, there are, uh, um, you know, intermediates uh, or novices or whatever you want to call them. So I think, I think it's really important that you guys need to fulfill, you know, uh, the 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 category it, you know if it says intermediate it doesn't mean that you haven't trained no you've been training for a little while but that's your first time in this category in this class mm -hmm. a lot of the guys train a couple of you know a couple of months and you know what I'm, I've grown a little bit yeah you know I've eaten six meals last week and I feel full and I'm ready for it but it, it doesn't work like this guys muscle mm -hmm. maturity is different you know it needs time um, getting in, look, guys, a, a lot of the guys, I'm sure, John, you would agree with me on this. A lot of the guys get from, let's say, 80 to 90 kilos and 
they feel good. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to compete at 85. Like, dude, hold on for a second. You put on size, but there's a lot of fat and water in you. Yeah, yeah. By yeah. the time you diet down, you'll go back to 80. I'm telling you. <laughs> You know, yeah. so it, it's, it's, there's no, there's yeah. hardly any, you know, muscle maturity. The muscles are not there yet. They haven't been built the right way for you to sustain it while you're, while you're dieting. Yeah. People, people want it so quick now. I get a lot of guys come to me for, um, for coaching and stuff at like 20, 21, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after six months, they're like, oh man, I just want to look like you. And it's like, bro, I've been training for 11 years now. You've been <laughs> training for three years and two of them years has been shit, you know, because we all train like shit for the yeah, first few years. I'm like, you need to, you need to pay your dues and put your time in, stop rushing things. Um, and and it, again, it's just, it's, it's social media, isn't it? It's social media that makes everybody want it so much quicker now. When I was, not that I'm old, but when I was 17 and just starting, social media was, well, Instagram wasn't around yeah. and uh, Facebook was only just starting, you know? So I kind of still came from the area where the era, sorry, of magazines and DVDs. It was when I was 15, 16, 17, 18, getting into it, it was still all mag. It was still only magazines and, you know, on all the DVDs of, um, of the bodybuilders, you know? Yeah. Um, and I've sort of come through the, like, come through the eras, you know, where social media has now taken over. Of course. And yeah, and, and the, the young guns are just, they just want it so quick now and it just doesn't happen like that. They need to slow the fuck down, you know? And yeah, you're right. Like most of them who, who think they're ready, they're, they're still skinny bitches. I'm still, I'm still a skinny bitch, you know? <laughs> we're, we're all every, I mean, I stood in, in a classic physique lineup uh, in 2018 in, in Budapest. And yeah. even though that I came down from 100 kilos to, to 90, it was, it's only 10 kilos of, of me dieting down, but in yeah. the same time, um, it, you know, being 90 at that level, you're going to look huge guys. You need to realize 212 class is like almost 90 kilos. Yeah. Uh, so you need to realize if I stand next to Flex Lewis, he'll probably dwarf me even that I'm, you know, um, uh, like taller than him yeah you know you need to realize guys that these it, it's 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 height to to weight uh and but in the same time you need to realize that a centimeter shorter means that he and, and a kilo heavier that's a huge, huge advantage huge difference huge difference so guys take your time take your time there's i mean this this beautiful uh art form forward slash sport as a lot of people yeah. call it has has a, uh, an amazing thing where you can get up to 50 years old and still look good and you can look good all your life because you know it's all about your nutrition how, how do you approach things how do you how you approach your exercises we see you know dexter jackson at, at you know this age you know still having huge legs maybe not not this year looking amazing because obviously we do age but at the same time he's still competitive you know <laughs> It's pretty sick for 50, isn't it? Exactly. So, guys, take your time. No one's rushing you. There's plenty of time. Every And, and, and no matter how old you are, there's always someone out there who's been training longer than you. Yeah. So you try to be the best you can, guys. Yeah, 100%, man. No, I agree with that, bro. I agree with um, that. Second question came from a, a, a really cool guy, actually. And I actually like this guy. He's, he's, a, classic, he's a classic bodybuilder. Uh, yeah. A good competitor, um, and um, what's his name? You got his name? Uh, Lewis Moylan. Ah. Uh, what up, brother? Say that again. I said, "What up, brother?" Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm mentioning his name for a reason, because um, he's been a follower of what we're doing and what we're trying to do for since you know since the beginning. Yeah. And um, he's a, he's a good he's a good athlete. I'm I'm bringing up straight up, and I. I have a feeling this guy will turn pro because the quality that he has yeah. is really good. So the question goes, what's your thoughts on heavy heavyweight bodybuilders cutting down to classic weight limits just to get a pro card without necessarily having classic physiques for, you know, fair game or stick to your class? It's a good question, huh? Yeah, that's a good question. What, so, guys, so guys in the heavyweight class who haven't got their pro card yet? Dropping um, down to try yeah, and yeah, basically, yeah. I think if if they're dropping down to try and get their pro card, to then step into the pro division to then try and 
<laughs> compete again in the open class. Mm-hmm. You know, because obviously there's no there's no restrictions. I have a pro card. I could do men's physique now if I wanted to. You know, yeah. But it, it, in that situation, don't really matter, does it? Because <laughs> because he's dropping down to get his pro. He obviously can't get his pro card at a higher weight class, so he's never going to do anything in the division anyway. So it sounds silly, but I don't even have any thoughts on it because that guy is probably never going to make it and probably never going to probably never going to do anything. But in regards to, um. I don't know, like, I have this thing, like, I know it's classic physique, but to me, I'm just a bodybuilder. I know what you mean. I you know, know what I mean? I feel the same. Yeah, I know I'm I know I'm know classic classic physique, but to me, I'm just a bodybuilder because when I, you know, when I reach my potential on stage, I'm going to be just as big, if not bigger, pound for pound than Arnie and all the other guys were. So how am I not just a bodybuilder, you know? that's how That's how I see myself. So if guys want to... If guys have been competing in the open class and want to come down to classic, then go for it. Give it a go. Like I don't think that you can really brand someone as, oh, he's got classic physique. He hasn't got classic physique. And I'll tell you why, even though everybody does, but I'll tell you why you can't. It's because you only see the, the, the best physiques back in the, the golden era or through the 80s. You only see the best physiques. I bet there was tons of bodybuilders back then that you didn't see that weren't in the limelight that didn't look great and you wouldn't say, oh, they had a classic physique because you don't see them. But now, again, we have social media, so you see everybody, you know? So I don't think you can really brand someone as, oh, he's got a classic physique, he hasn't got a classic physique. I think everybody just has such different shapes, such different, you know? And obviously, like, people who say, oh, he has got a classic physique, well, they're just the guys who have got good genetics and better structure, you know? They have the small waist, broad shoulders. They're just... That's what I mean. That's just what a good bodybuilder is, isn't it? It's not that they're classic or not classic. They're just good. <laughs> that's what I mean. I think I think the classic classic bodybuilding and classic physique, uh, because of the weight restriction, I think I think it's uh, one of these things where uh, they're smaller and they have better aesthetics. But guys, yeah. Cedric McMillan has a classic physique and he's heavier yeah. than most guys on stage. You know, if we want to call classic, classic, uh, uh, classic, a classic physique, I think, I think for us, we should just say they look aesthetically better. Yeah. 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 Not being biased or anything. Yeah. That's it. They just look better. (laughs) But the, the question here has a very good point. Yeah. They don't look classic coming down from heavyweights yet. They still get their pro cards. So I think there's a, there's a little, you know, there's a little trick in the question here in regards to judging. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't, I don't, if I'm honest, I don't know anybody who's come down from heavyweights, come down to get their, uh, their pro card in classic. Cause I'll be honest, I don't really follow anybody. See me. I mean, I've, I've been, um, okay. No, I've been, Let, let's, let's repeat this. I'm going to rephrase that because it's, I have to be very, very uh, careful with how I, I uh, put this together. Why? Don't worry. Uh, because, no, no, no. Because because a lot of people would probably look at me as a hater, but I don't hate anyone, guys. But for me, I think Regan Grimes ruined classic physique in the in the pro ranks. For him to come down, oh, yeah. for him to come down. I mean, this is this is obviously we're talking about pros now, guys. There's a, there's a red line between the two here because mm. the, the weights the weights are completely different. I mean, uh, John and I have to be eighty nine ninety kilos in, in 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 the amateurs going to to um the pros we we could put another eight to seven to eight kilos i think or it's, nine it's five it's five kilos so i was allowed to be 93 oh um, okay probably, Nine, similar 93. You, probably similar for you because you think we're about the same height. uh yeah, bro, now i'm allowed to be 98 you see what i mean but obviously i was only 90 if not if barely scratching 90 uh, pro, so I've got eight kilos to put on. So what I mean, so I think when it happened, when this happened with Regan, coming down from from a like a like an open class, no, down to two twelve, he went straight into classic. Um, for me, this ruined the 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 you know the class because now everyone started chasing size. Yeah. And even us standing in in the lineups, I feel like the guys are huge, and it's, it's but, become a size game again. But correct me. If I'm wrong, because I may be wrong, Regan didn't do shit in classic, did he? Um, he won his um, uh, the, the qualifier, but then he went to the Olympia and he got his ass handed up to him. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so I mean, he yeah, won't so be able to stand fine. next what? to Brian Ansley. Did he do? Did he do the classic Olympia? 
Yeah, he did. He did. He didn't get anywhere. Yeah. So he. So again, don't matter, does it? He, That's what I mean. It answers. He probably to dropped you, right? down. To, he probably dropped down to classic, thinking it would be easy because everybody gives him the heart that he's the nuts, and then he done shit. So this is what I'm saying. I wouldn't worry about people coming down. So you know, no matter how big their name is, I wouldn't worry about people coming down to. That's what I mean. Classic, just That's because they I mean, think guys. it's easier, because it don't mean nothing, you know. Like. Regan's got to get in shape before he can do anything. That's what I mean, guys. A lot of the guys, obviously, I had a lot of messages saying, you're a hater and all that. Guys, believe me, I'm not a hater. Well, I hate it. You support just, more than anyone else. Uh, uh, people just get butthurt about everything. You can't talk about nothing nowadays without people getting all that. I know. I know. <laughs> especially if Regan's, especially if they're a fan of him or a fan of whoever it is you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest with you guys, if you want to go brown nose Regan, I don't mind, man, guys. You know, it's just... Keep it real, guys. He's it's body building. Physique. He's got sick. He's got sick physique. He's amazing. I'm he hasn't won him. anything. Why would we knock the guy down? I mean, he's amazing. Yeah, he's got an awesome seat. He hasn't won anything. Though. That's just the fact. <laughs> right. Another question here. Um, all right. Uh, we've done this. We've done the vacuum thing. So I don't want to touch on vacuum. We probably could put it right at the end, guys. Yeah. Um, one of there. There was a really good question here regarding um, uh, training legs training um, legs i love leg training yeah best squat Let's position see. and rep range to target quads best squat position and rep range so i actually i actually done um done a youtube video yesterday kind of brushing on um squatting and i was basically saying that nowadays most people who um who are squatting if you have if you if you squat and you have like a back issue or something like that and there's a particular way that you squat to save your form or to save your back or whatever that's cool you you guys are to the side but if you're you know, you know your mobility is all good and you can squat fine like you should be squatting for quads i'm just going to talk about quads you know talking about quad training mm-hmm. You should be doing a high bar squat, you know. I'm very much. This is why, like, I'm such a big fan of Tom Platts because I just believe what I believe his ethos for squatting is true, and it's about squatting should be the true, pure form of of squatting is a high bar squat. Yeah, mm-hmm. most guys nowadays do low bar squatting, like powerlifters and stuff like that. And the only reason you would do a low bar squat is to put yourself in a mechanically advantageous position to line the bar up with the center of your feet so that you could squat more, okay? And that's what bodybuilders are only worried about nowadays. They just want to squat more, squat more, squat more, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, I've done that and I've done high bar squatting and my quads have never been as good as they are now. High bar squatting as opposed to low bar squatting, you know? You need to be doing the true form, you know, heels raised if your ankle mobility, some people have really bad ankle mobility. Um, you know, jack your heels up, high bar squat, the true form, straight up, straight down. It should be a quad dominant squat. Most guys nowadays are hitting, hitting. Um, it's like a glorified hip thrust. You see them doing the low bar squat. They come down to barely parallel. Their ass, their, their backs are like a 45 degree angle. Their hips are coming right out. And they're basically hip thrusting the way up. Uh-huh. You know, it's all it's all glutes, like lower back and, and hamstrings for stabilization. Like a lot of guys are not using their quads for um for squatting. I, I need to make a good point out of this. Yeah, I've realized nowadays, mm. looking at the shows for the past a good five years. Yeah, and it's a really good point where I can actually relate to what you're saying. Is that a lot of the guys on stage, if you look at them, they've got huge glutes, massive asses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The quad development does yeah. not match. And they've got it's good, good development. Morris. They've got good upper quad development, but then they've got no meat around the knee. They haven't got the um, the teardrop and, that, and all that, you know? That's you what really, I mean, guys. You know? And, and it's like, I see, it really frustrates me, actually, like, talking about squat and squatting and, like, leg training and stuff like that, because I see people talking about hitting depth and stuff like that. But, they're like, they're hitting depth with their, like, I'm just going to talk simply, with their knee at a 90 degree angle, you know, they're talking about hitting depth like this, but that's not, depth is when your your freaking ass is touching your calves, you know, if you get your ass to touch your calves and you get up out of that position without, um, you know, without kicking your lower back out, like in a squat, yeah. then your quads have to work exponentially more than, you know, if you're doing like, like kicking your hips out, like things like hack squats as well. Like guys don't go full depth, 
You know, they don't get in that full flexion position where their knee, where their calf's like touching their fucking ass, you know? Yeah, no like when you get into those sorts of squat positions, that's where you're going to fucking build some quads, man. Like I, I, I encourage anybody who hasn't tried, you know, Tom Platt style training to, to do it. You know, the way he uses the hack squat, the way he squats, the way he does leg extensions. Like I, I'm completely the opposite. So with leg extensions, that's normally where guys are using leg extensions to help build the meat around the knee. But I use leg extensions to the opposite. I use leg extensions to build my, um, like right up by my hip flexors, you know, right, I see what you rather mean. So than you're, just, you're sitting up upright a bit more. Yeah. And rather than just extending the knee, I also then lift, I lift my whole knee up to engage my hip flexor. So when I'm hitting my quad, when I'm doing my leg extensions, I'm trying to feel right at the top of my quads, not down by where the knee is. You know, that's, that's a fantastic uh, way of approaching this. Yeah, like we, we, yeah, we need to we need to consider one thing. I mean, guys, we're talking about you know John being uh, uh, you know much younger than me. I mean, I'm I'm probably yeah. right at the end of it. But, yeah, you know, talking about someone like myself, I'm the healthy people. Or, well, not healthy, but joints all intact. Yeah, yeah, of course. Joints are fresh. Let's put it as, uh, you know, fresh joints. Yeah. For me, I've, I've, I've come from a background that I was already wrecked. So when I came mm. to bodybuilding, I've already had problems with my knees and everything. So yeah. Yeah. you need to consider, guys, that you, if you have injuries and stuff like this, your range will be different than John's. John yeah. would go all the way down, ass to grass, and he would actually connect with the knee as in he would pretend that there's there's a string pulling his knee backwards to yeah. to to perform but mm. for us what we do is that we squeeze our butts and come up instead of yeah. us doing that sort of motion yeah because of the injuries and because of how tight the lower back is because of yeah. the hip flexors so if you can't go ask to grass in a squat guys change the exercise you don't have to squat yeah, squats squats might not wrap be up your knees yeah, you know, it's very important, guys. That you know, your your well being is is probably more important than anything. Mm -hmm. Because think about it: you squat today on a Monday, and then you'll need like five days to get your knees back to normal, or yeah. you get inflammation in your knees and your lower back, and that's just gonna not gonna mm -hmm. work. Yeah, especially if you guys do push pull. You know, let's 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 cover everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You push and push pull lower body. By the yeah, time you get to your second leg workout, you're 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 fucked. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna be with the time. <laughs> it covers quite a bit, guys. I mean, I mean, John can probably. I mean, John and I can probably do a webinar for you guys at some point. Yeah, on I talk and John goes through the exercises and teaches you guys how to go from from A to B mm. with every. I mean, every five centimeters, there is something different that you need to do with yeah. the muscle mind connection. A lot of people yeah. don't know that. Yeah, hundred percent, man, hundred percent. Like with um. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I was gonna say with the with the squatting and that the way I squat now, high bar squats, I I drastically reduce the weight. You know, I don't do as much weight as I used to. I've done. I, I'm not fucking like Ronnie Coleman strong, you know, but I've done like five plates aside for ten to twelve reps on squats. That is, it's pretty strong, you know. It's not seven eight plates like some people do, but it's it's pretty strong, you know. Five plates aside, but I don't do that now. I, do it as well. I literally train from two to three plates and I'm hitting reps, you know, the, like I'm trying to hit like 120 for 50 reps, you know, wow. which hurts, you know, but that's what Platz used to do. You know, he used to do, he said his best was 405, so like four plates for 50 reps. I'm like, man, I'm not even close to that yet. But, you know, I'm trying, my next goal is three plates for 50 reps. You know, I've done like mid thirties, but that's how I, that's how I squat now, you know. I, I don't go crazy heavy. My form, me, I'm meticulous on my form. Um, I do like wearing um, squat shoes, like lifting shoes. Um, mm -hmm. um, I think that's really, really beneficial for squats. Do, do yeah, you, rep, rep ranges, which is the second part of the question, is um, you need to mix it up. You need to do both, to be honest. You can't just do high reps. You can't just do low reps. I'd mix it up week to week. Week on week, I'd be hitting some 6 to 10s or 12, whatever. And then the next week, I'd be going up as high as 50. Hundred hmm. percent, you know. So well, let's. Uh, let's um, there's another good question here that I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I, I would like to um, uh, start start off with with answering it myself because in case I forget, <laughs> yeah, go for it. my memory after the coronavirus has become so crap. <laughs> you know. So um, here the question is how to transition 
from bulk to cutting diet wise. I'm going to start with that. And John, you, I know you have a different approach and I know how you are, but because guys, you need to realize John is the white version of Dexter Jackson here in the UK. This yeah. guy could stay lean all year round if he wants to. Yeah. What I do so for that is gonna be I'm going to talk from my experience as a, as a middle Eastern, um, uh, guy um, who possibly, or, or I don't know what you guys... I wonder what you was going to say then. Middle East. <laughs> Middle East. Well, with the beard now, you know, straight, you know, that's the one-way one way ticket look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I mean, listen, a shaved head with, with a beard, you know, yeah. imagine if I hold a device in, in, a, in a somewhere. <laughs> <you know? laughs> And speak Arabic on the phone to my parents. Yeah. You know? yeah. Then, you People know, would run. They say, voila. Everyone <laughs> runs away. <laughs> uh, see, I can't say that. You can say that. You see what I mean? I can get away with it, bro. But, you know, we'll, we'll leave the white jokes for you guys. Yeah. Um, right. Back to the question, guys. Yeah. Guys, I, I, remember, I remember a seminar from, from George Farah years ago. And uh, I wasn't there. But, but this was, he answered the same question to me when a few years before that. So in 2013, I was, I was at the Olympia, um, as uh, watching yeah. and uh, I bumped into George and I, you know, we spoke and everything. And I actually said to him, like, I diet down very slow. Mm. So if, if someone needs 14 to 12 weeks to diet in, in, a, in, in the normal world, I would take 20 weeks. Why? It's because I lose a lot of size going down because mm. I over diet or overdo it, do it with cardio and, and, uh, cytomil yeah. because I have slow metabolism. Yeah. So, so guys, you need to, you need to look at dieting for a show, like landing a, a plane. If mm. you land down that way, you know, dipping down that way, nosedive, mm. you're going to crash. So you need to come down just like landing it and smooth. Take yeah. your time, guys. And the, one, of the, one of the main things, guys, if you stay semi-lean all year round, you won't have this issue that I had. Because every time I tried to compete, it was more of a challenge. Like, I had a surgery, therefore, I need to compete. So going down from 118 kilos yeah. back down yeah. to 90, trying to compete. And this is where the problem is. Mm. So first of all, if you're going to do a show and you're coming out of an injury, don't put that show in mind. Just yeah. come down slow. As soon as you get to a shape where you're happy and you think like, okay, I look like I'm 12 weeks out now. Now let's do it. Put a show. Yeah. yeah. Put a show. And then from this point, you won't have this issue with skin, excess skin, you know, saggy skin. You yeah. won't have problems doing so much cardio and burning so much of your muscle. And at the same time, you don't have to diet that hard going into keto and all this shit. I mean, I've, I mean, I, I believe in high fats and everything. It's okay. You know, that's nutrition. It's, it's all, you know, it's, it's all good, mm. but we need to realize bodybuilders need carbs. Yeah. And I've, I've emphasized, even Lee Haney says I've dieted on carbs. So if you're going to cut down your carbs too early to get in shape, that means you're not ready. Yeah. So I'll leave the mic to you, uh, uh, John. I don't know how you think. It's difficult. Like I can speak for myself. I can speak to the majority because I'm, What's I'm, I'm, I don't know if I've got Dexter Jackson genetics, but I do seem to be, I'm really different, you know, but my, my experiences of dieting is, um, is like after a show, you know, you'll probably notice after a show, I don't do much. Um, I don't, that's just my mentality. I'm not the kind of guy who's like finished the show and then I'm straight in the gym the next day to try and, uh, you know, work on my weak points and get better and get better and hustle and grind. I'm not that guy. Like, I don't feel like I need to do that because of how hard I train when I do train for a show. So after a sh what I'm getting to is after a show, like, for example, after the British, I kind of stopped training for six weeks. I don't eat like a bodybuilder. I didn't train like a bodybuilder for, for six weeks because I knew I didn't have anything in the pipeline until my next pro show. If I had another show and then might, might have been different, you know. But I, um, I kind of gradually build back up into – the lifestyle, if I'm honest, like I come out of the lifestyle for, for, for a month or so. And then as I, as I gradually get back into it, I start to increase my food. Like when I'm, but the first part of my prep, the first, I'll start at 16 weeks out, but it's not that I start 16 weeks out dieting. I start 16 weeks out to start eating because I don't generally eat like I should do in the off season. 
because I don't like, you know, I don't want to get, I don't want to get fat. You know, <laughs> I don't want to gain a shit ton of, um, a shit ton of, uh, excess body fat. So I don't try and push food, um, like to astronomical values like some people do. I don't feel I need to. I feel like I can still grow, um, you know, on not minimal food, not minimal food, but the, well, the minimum required to grow, yeah, which exactly. is still probably a lot for some people, yeah. you know, but I don't push food. Yeah. I don't try to put weight on. I don't. So from the British finals, I was what? 90 kilos on stage. I rebounded as everybody does. You know, I went on holiday, ate some food up to about 98 kilos. So it's not really a lot for some people to do. Some people gain about 20 kilos, you know. Yeah, I know. So I gained like eight kilos at 98. Then from 98, when I was, that was December time, going through to sort of February, I went down to 92. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was 92 kilos, but looking like well out of shape. Wow. Well out of shape, you know, because I kind of just chill out of everything. But then when, when time comes to lay it down, like six months before a show, I start eating. And, and now I'm like back up to like 96 kilos. Mm. And I kind of just slowly, slowly keep the food going in, you know, and then. Fantastic. So um, it's a very, my, my, I don't even know if that made any sense to anyone, but the way I diet is so weird. Like I can tell you 20 weeks out from my last show I did last year, I was 90 kilos and not in shape. And then I was 90 kilos on stage and in shape. And in between that time, I went up to 96 and then came back down. And I'm, yeah, you know, I, I see what you mean. The thing is, guys, you need to realize there are, there are two kinds of people here when it comes yeah, to I have a dieting. Physique. You know, there's there's a, there are people who drop fat and drop the drop weight to get yeah. into shape, and there are people who grow into the, into the diet. There mm. are people who start. Um, I feel like my sorry to interrupt. I feel like my type of prep is like more of a, a recomposition, like a body recomp. You know, yeah. Yeah. I just slowly change. You know, I. I, I slowly start eating a bit more and then I slowly come back down. The weight doesn't really change, you know? That's what I mean. It's like a lot of guys um, really uh, in the industry grow into the diet. So yeah. you guys would probably weigh the same, but then um, the, you look completely different. You'd look, yeah. you'd look more muscular, obviously drier and, and you know, yeah. stage ready. And then when you start, you compare the pictures and you think, you know what? Yeah. I look like a normal person here. I look like a bodybuilder here, but we're the same weight. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't have to, you know, you know, yeah. do much in terms of uh, adjust, you know, dropping down to, to a certain weight to make yeah. weight in, in, on, on, on the day. Yeah. Um, I have another question here, which is also uh, very nice. And that's uh, going to keep people uh, happy as well. Um, look at favorite, my sweat patches. Favorite look foods. Look at I'm sweating. You make me nervous. Or it's because I'm in this freaking greenhouse. Oh, God. I, I, I thought you were in a sauna. Well, it's a, it's a conservatory. I'm at my girlfriend's house. It's a conservatory, but it's right. fucking hot. There's, there's a fan behind you. If, if you have a <laughs> I don't think it works. Okay, plug in. Good decoration. It doesn't even look vintage. Yeah, I know. Do you like, do you like my backdrop for this uh, <laughs> for our first episode? Well, it's definitely better than mine. <laughs> yeah, at least I've got something going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, favorite foods for bulk? Favorite foods for bulk? I'm a boring person to ask that question. I don't really eat any different. I just eat less of the same thing. Like, I just eat chicken and rice and steak and eggs and oats. I, I eat the same year round. I think that's why I don't struggle dieting. Do you, do you change like your 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 rice and pastas to no. more starchy stuff? No. I eat chicken and rice year round. Chicken and rice, steak and potato, eggs and oats in the morning. It's been my diet for years. I, 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 that's, I'm, that's honest. I don't have don't have favorite bulk foods. Obviously, uh, obviously uh, M McDonald's. Mm. <laughs> I throw, my my off season is um is the same diet but with a cheat meal every day. All right. That's my that that's honestly my that's my season. That's what I've done the last two years. I have the same foods, obviously a bit more of it, and then one of my meals. Like normally, my, I normally only eat five meals, five big meals. Yeah, um, I, I go to five. five. I can't do more. There's, yeah, there's not I, um, many hours in the day for me to put a, a sixth one. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And then one of their meals is a cheat meal. Doesn't it's not always the fifth. Sometimes I have it before training. How, um, how many cheat meals uh, do you get? Whatever. Huh? 
How many cheat meals do you get in anyway? What? What? A week. Well, off season, one a day. Seven. Oh, so hold on, hold on. One a day. So you eat one cheat meal a day. Every day without fail. Yeah, I'll go. So part in my, I spend a lot of money on food. In my off season, without fail, once a day, I'll either go to, um, there's a cafe around the corner from me that I go to, Cafe 11. They do some nice pancakes and stuff like that. I'll either go there, I'll either go Nando's, or I'll go and get like a Five Guys or a Macca's or a burger. Call it wrong, I don't care. That's what I do in the off season. I have one, I have four meals that are the same, which is normally two chicken and rice meals, one steak and potato, eggs and oats in the morning, and then I have one cheat meal. You see what I mean, guys? It's very simple. It's what yeah. you do after in the gym that that matters. And then when I'm when I'm prepping for a show, I'm I'm eating six meals. Um, one che- that cheat meal is replaced for just another. Um, a, a lately, I've been having bagels and eggs. I like that. And then I have another oats and eggs meal, um, or oats and whey before I go to bed. Right, right. Um, and I just have one cheat meal. Um, actually, I don't have any cheat meals when I start my prep. Hmm. so 16 weeks out I take all the cheat meals out and I clean up and then when they're ready to go back in when I'm starting to get lean and we need to slow things down I put them back right. in a week. Right. Um, there's a question here that that is actually funny yeah it's yeah good I want a funny question it's it's a very simple it's a very very simple uh, question but it's actually funny because of where yeah. we are at this stage how's your training what fucking training <laughs> fucking prick it could be better <laughs> what training it could be better I'm, I've got a lot of weights in the garden but it's not um, it's not the same I'm not I'm not posting people keep asking me to post uh, workout videos um, I can't be bothered I'll let everybody else do it for me everybody's <laughs> posting plenty of workout videos I'm not that guy I'm not that guy doing a, a home workout video no. I'll have to wait till I get back in the gym. Me too. I mean, I, I got criticized for for pointing it out. Yeah. I got called all, sort, all sorts of names. I had people even calling me to... I mean, I'm very outspoken. If I want to call someone a dickhead, I will. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, this time, I didn't say it to his face. I, I put it in a, in a Facebook status because I just... Yeah. He, you know, everyone's... Yeah, in when you house. first met me, you thought I was... A, you called me a men's physique athlete. Yeah, that wasn't really an insult, was it? <laughs> <laughs> you thought you thought I was a men's physique athlete, wasn't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't realize because you you had, a, you had a you had a like a jumper on. I you know, you walk the flip flops. They don't think I'm a bodybuilder. <laughs> you know, and then you know you you took off your 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 top. I had a look. I was like, well, he's still not 100 percent peaked, and he's not he's not yeah. pumped that much, so it's quite small. And then. Then you showed me your. You didn't show me. You put your. You dropped your trousers down in front of this, the mirror. You were getting ready for a show. Yeah. I just looked at it. I was like, okay, now we need to talk. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. There, there's there, there's a lot going on, and obviously, yeah. it's not only the legs. I was looking at you from the side. Yeah. So obviously, when you look at someone from the side, you see that 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 separation from the quad and, and the and the and the hamstring drop, and then you see yeah. the the tie-ins and. You start seeing the glutes and everything, and thinking like, okay, no, this guy is is game. <laughs> and, I, and then we came to, you know, we spoke to each other, we said hello, yeah. and you know, yeah. we, we just uh, um, became friends. Then, um, yeah. okay, this- I think Sammy introduced me to everyone as the next classic physique pro, and everyone's like, oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, and then I want it. <laughs> and I, then, I, I and know. Like, I, oh, okay, <laughs> look, in, in this industry, I love Sammy. You know, when when you start training in smaller gyms, mm. and especially commercial gyms, this is this is one of the things that uh, it's quite it's actually funny. You go to a, a commercial gym and you think like, uh, you know, you're training and someone people look at you, you look different, yeah. obviously in a commercial gym because you're a competitor. Everyone's just a gym goer, and you get you get one two guys training in a corner, and one of them looks quite good, and one of them is like the follower, and then he introduces guy. This guy could be pro. This guy is amazing. He could beat yeah. anyone. And then you look at him, I was like, yeah, I mean, the guy has potential. You know, he's, he's quite small. You know, you need more time, my friend. And then you can't tell them. So you're like, oh, really? Oh, wow. You look good, man. But you're just trying to face the conversation because you yeah. need to train and get out. Yeah. And then, and then 
all these little questions started to come after. And so, so I thought in the beginning, you know, Sammy introduced you to me like, oh, this is the next pro. And I'm thinking like, yeah, maybe, you never yeah. know. But obviously then when I saw you and like, you know what, this guy, had... the day you posed in front of me, actually, that was the day I told you, I actually shook your hand and I said to you. Oh, uh, yeah, when, um, yeah, yeah, I remember that when it was on the green strip and that. Yeah. that I, I actually shook your hand and I told you congratulations now because I don't yeah. think anyone could beat, beat that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, um, I can't remember when that was. It wasn't oh, far out, was it? Maybe a week. No, you were two it? weeks out. Yeah. Yeah. And you were well, ready two weeks out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was ready then. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, I, well, I had done the qualifier five weeks before, so I was 90, 90% of the qualifier, you know, so. Okay, there's another rude, rude asshole here who says to me, how did you develop the lazy eye? Fuck you. <laughs> That's my answer to you. C coronavirus completed it mate <laughs> yeah all right so here that's a good question for you bro that's actually a really cool question who would you want to play you in a movie of your life uh channel time oh yeah where's the hat well yeah yeah but yeah you could you know i feel like he copied me yeah <laughs> guys for me bin laden <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. I, I don't, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, Challenge who's gonna play me? Come on, you go for it. Uh, no, yeah, wait, what's his I'm name? Not, ba what, Borat, Borat, yeah, Bon. <laughs> yeah, the dude. Of, what's his name? Ali G. Yeah, Ali G. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if it was you, me, I, I thought yeah, it was you in the film. I watched the Dictator the other day. I thought it was you. <laughs> Okay, guys, it's going to be uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. That'll, that'll be me. Yeah, uh, You'll need to put a bit more meat on him. Yeah. He's too skinny. He's too skinny. Um, I think that's it for questions. Um, yeah. Um, but then there is a subject that someone wanted to open here. Yeah. Uh, that I have to read out because it's all recorded and beautifully put in, um, which is amazing. Here it says... Um, okay. I've got back sweat going on. I've got a sweaty back. I'm sweating my ass off. Damn. Like working out. Right, so here, the question is, who's your first guest for your, um, for your podcast? Is he going to be open class or a, or a classic physique? And is he British or American? We can't tell them, can we? No. I can't well, we haven't even, we've got about... There's no excitement. Maybe we've got about, what, I don't know, five guys lined up or whatever, but I don't think we've even discussed who's going on first. Level. Exactly, guys. This is too new. So we need, we need your feedback. You need a name. We need a name. Exactly. We need a name. Exactly. We don't have a name. We don't have a logo. Bodybuilding we don't have raw. any... Bodybuilding Raw. Bodybuilding Raw. Could but it's out. a bit... You know, we want a bit more to it, isn't it? Yeah, there, no, there, there's a name here. There's a name here that, that actually... I was thinking like, I, I was thinking of like cool names, but they're not funny. I was thinking like Flex Culture. Hmm. I, like I just thought of that. Nice. I like that one. But, here, but this it's one not says, funny. Um, hold on, hold on. This one says, Iron Buzz. What? Iron Buzz. Iron, Iron Buzz. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. I don't think I don't think we should have the word iron in it. Yeah, I know. It makes people too many... think us think that we're like meatheads or something. Exactly. There's a lot of iron shit going on here. Yeah, there's a lot of iron, and and it and it just makes me think of Generation Iron, and I hate Generation Iron. Yeah. Well. That's so what else? What else? Do you have any other names? No, we need to put it out there. So if we, what we'll do is we'll put it out there on a uh, on a story this week. Guys, give us a name. Bodybuilding and Bumblefuck. <laughs> Bumblefuck. Bumblefuck. Yeah. What does that even mean? It, it, Bumblefuck is is like when you tell someone like, "Oh, I work in Bumblefuck." Like it's so far that you, it doesn't even have a name. <laughs> you know, it's like so far, like you're at the edge of the 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 planet. Is that American thing? Very, very. 
Yeah. When <laughs> you say someone, so where are you? I, I live too far, man. It's like in fucking Bumble. That's like bodybuilding and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, bodybuilding in Bumblefuck, so it's like bodybuilding oh, in Bumblefuck. In nowhere, you know. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know. It might well, work. Put, my it, out there. put it out there to see what names we get, and then hopefully next week we'll have a name. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, guys, we need we need your feedback. We need you to subscribe down there. Uh, we need you guys to um, to give us your comments. You know, guys, we're, we're, it's okay to bring negative stuff. You yeah, know, we we feed off this, okay? Yeah, definitely. You know, you bring negative stuff. I swear back at you. It's all good. You know, we're all family. You know, <laughs> and and John would help me with that. I'm sure. You know. Yeah. Uh, but no, we need we need you guys to contribute. We, we want you we want you guys to grow with us. Um, we we want to be as real as possible. That's why we're thinking of the word raw. We want people to talk openly. We don't want to hide things here and there. Uh, within reason, obviously, because we know we don't want to influence uh, the youngsters to do stupid shit. That's as, as simple as that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I agree with that. No, we just need a good name. Like, yeah, I don't know. So, um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is our next. Uh, I'm just kidding, guys. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Imagine that. We have Arnold on here. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, but but we have some pros, guys. We I saw him do a podcast for something called Ladder the other day. Uh huh. I don't know what ladder is, but I saw him doing it. He's got two donkeys now. Oh. I've got a pug. I've got a pug. I don't know where he is, though. Maybe I'll get the pug. If you're, if you're asking what am I drinking, this is actually really cool. Um, this is hibiscus tea. Um, it just boosts your immune system. And I, a lot of, first thing I was drinking this, the first joke that my friends did, well, are you drinking something blood? I'm thinking like you're asking. Oh, period blood. It's disgusting. <laughs> you guys are disgusting. Just because I'm a heavy metal guy doesn't mean I'm gonna drink blood. <laughs> oh yeah, you got the motorhead thing. Yeah, motorhead. I don't wear much else other than vests. I think I need a new wardrobe. No, but that's your style, you know. If if I then- by the way, do you know who you look like? Uh. You look like the, the, the front man from Limp Biscuit. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. I don't know his name. I don't know his name. I know you mean that. Yeah, I'm, I forgot his name. Though. Even though I'm a, I'm a heavy metal fan, I should know. But um, yeah. I think I think my my uh, my as I said, my memory's gone a bit weird. Yeah. Um, guys, we're gonna have to wrap it up now. So uh, thank you very much for listening to us, you guys. Listen, as man. I said, subscribe, put a like if you like it. Give us some suggestions. More to come there are better uh better podcasts coming out there we might have one or two other people with us we don't care if we have female athletes m- you know men we want everyone to contribute here we want to make bodybuilding good again all right it's not like the bodybuilding will never die guys but we just want to make sure we put it out for you guys as it is that's why we want the word raw in here so please guys thank you again for for listening to this um best regards for myself and ifbb pro uh john lofthouse guys stay in touch and thank you very much for listening peace peace out